All right, there's Ziggler. <laughs> you just come up with a plan. Well, I do go down there and uh, aggro the shit out of this guy. Um, all right, so how this fight is gonna go? It's um, Ziggler. It's gonna jump into this fight no matter what you do. Um, best way to take this part on, you just you snipe him from here, grab his attention, back it up a little bit. Ziggler's gonna jump down. No matter what you do, even if you jump down right there, he Ziggler will just jump down. And pretty much, if you stay up here, you're you're safe from almost all his attacks. Um, he does have a breath attack, but if you keep range, it shouldn't hit you. Um, the reason why we're doing this, it's cause um. This is the best strategy to um, keep his attention on us. Because you don't want him to be attacking Ziggler. See how he's just constantly trying to come after us, but you know, he's just doing moonwalk. Because there's uh, a little path blocking him. So, pretty much, we're just doing this. So, we grab his attention while Ziggler finishes him off from the side. Alright, because, um. Did he die? I sure hope he didn't. Uh, oh, fucking scared the shit out of me. Yeah, because he can die during this part, so. Um, the best tactic is you draw his attention while Ziggler attacks from the side. And because he, it seems like he hits harder, so, you know, just let him do all the physical attacks while you try to, like, you know, draw his attention. And you're just gonna get stuck, like, right here. And, um, yeah, don't try to let Ziggler fight him alone, because chances are he's gonna get killed instead of the, the beast, alright? So, yeah, be careful when it comes to this part. You don't want him dying, because if he dies, you can't, con uh, you can't continue his quest line. So, yeah, make sure you, you do your teamwork right here. <sighs> that was quite a performance. But you mustn't get in over your head. We unkindled must put our duties first. But for the moment, we've a toast to me. I like how he tells me to not get in over my head when he's the one who fucking charges down right there face to face with a thing. Holy crap. Your valor, my sword, and our victory together. Long may the sun shine. <laughs> He's not even holding anything. And how's he even gonna drink through that armor of his? Well, I'm going to have myself a little nap. The only thing to do, really, after a nice toast. <laughs> I love this guy. He's so chill. <laughs> uh, once he falls asleep and you talk to him, it gives you the sleep gesture. And that's pretty much it for that. Um, yeah, he's just gonna be sleeping. Good thing um, NPCs can't get invaded, right? Because, I mean, if you can get invaded, it's probably not like a very smart thing to do, just sleeping out there. You know, if I were him, I'd freaking fly back to Firelink and then sleep there because it's pretty safe there. Um, yeah. Up next, we're going to get a pretty important item. Well, at least to me, it's pretty important because I want to do the quest line. So we got a pale tongue here. This is a P uh, this is a PVP item here. Uh, so if you invade it as a red phantom and you like you know do a multiplayer player versus player thing going on, and when you invade as a red phantom and if you manage to kill the host, you'll be awarded with this pale tongue. Um, this tongue it's used for Leonhard's quest. So at you need at least at least one. You need at least one of these in order to progress through his quest. So one free one you can get right here uh, per playthrough. So yeah, um, but if you want to get more, you're going to have to do PvP for it. And you can only get it if you manage to kill the host. All right? If you die before you kill the host, that shit ain't going to happen. Unless there's another phantom that invades and you know he kills him before you disappear. Then you'll get a pale tongue. But yeah. And once you gather like what? 10 that will like rank your covenant up to rank 1 and then 20 for rank 2 I believe I think and then 30 for rank 3 or it may maybe 30 for rank 2 I don't know like the exact number for it I know in Dark Souls 1 it was crazy when I first um when they first did this um covenant thing ranking up like I remember it even till now because it's so crazy 
10 I, ten of those covenant items for rank 1 and then 30 for rank 2 and then 70 for rank 3 rank 3 is the highest so and it requires 70 that was crazy but yeah uh, but it's well actually in Dark Souls 1 it's not even covenant items you just use um, humanities and that's how you get around with that but yeah um anyways up next we got these guys that are in the cage they look like they're dead but they're not you can kind of tell because the ones that are alive looks they're a little bit more white right they're brighter than the ones that are like not alive with this dog i'm just gonna do a charging attack and kill him one hit the reason for that is because there's a second one hanging out here and i don't want to be dealing with two dogs at once one dog jumping around like a maniac is already too much for me. <laughs> it drives me nuts when these dogs start jumping around. And if there's two, oh my god. I'm pretty much, it's like a guarantee thing, I'm gonna get whacked. And there's total four of these cage guys over here. Um, the reason they're not dropping down right now is because this is for a little ambush. And if you're not aware of them, and you just pick up this chest right here all four will drop down behind you and shit is gonna go down so make sure you um, take care of them first before opening the chest and inside we got the human pine resin which is over here okay charcoal pine resin rotted with human body fluids a temporarily applies dark to right hand weapon Okay, I think that's new. I don't think um, before in any other Souls game you can apply stuff like that. I know you can cast spells to get like dark on your uh, weapon, but I don't think they ever did this thing where you can get like a dark pine resin and stuff like that. At least I don't remember any of them. And while this bitch is casting, you could just shoot them. You know to interrupt their spells it doesn't have to be a headshot i'm just doing headshots so it does extra damage um yeah i like how her friend just you know chills right there like you know this is all good this is like a this is a new way for like facial therapy you know you just fucking shoot a shitload of arrows into one's face and you know you make them pretty like that <laughs> So she's like, she's all cool about it until she gets a uh, fucking katana in the back. Bam! You gonna fall? No? Alright. Whoa, almost got hit. Almost got hit. I was two handing the weapon. How about another backstab? Down you go. Oh, she dropped her trousers. You gonna drop anything for me? No? Alright. And that's pretty much it for um, this little side area. Um, there's still one more item we can get, which is up here. It's fin, fin's ring. Yeah, fin's ring. And this item is pretty cool for us, you know, for us who like to use light builds. Because uh, lowering equipment load increases attack. So the lower your equipment load, the more attack you'll get from this ring, uh, the bonus attacks. So yeah, pretty awesome. Obviously, if you're using like some sort of tank build, that's not gonna work. <laughs> so yeah, um, the drop here it's kind of weird because even though if you drop down, you still take a little bit of chip damage. I don't know why, but from dropping down here to here, you don't take any damage. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But yeah, um, let's see. I'm deciding. Okay, this is probably the... Uh... <sighs> you know what, let's... I want to top off my health here, just in case I fuck up the jump. Because I feel like... With the blue tier stone ring equipped, we have a chance of surviving if we fuck up the jump. Because you gotta jump from here to there. Okay, and screw up the jump, you're gonna land straight to the bottom. Ooh, I made it nice okay this is good <laughs> and once we're down here we get the chloranthi ring and we get the mirror set kind of sort of all right so the mirror set it's pretty much lucatel set 
from Dark Souls 2. Those of you guys that play Dark Souls 2 and did her quest line should be pretty familiar with that. Um, but we don't have the helmet for it. Um, you can get the helmet from Snuggly. You gotta trade with him or her. I'm not really sure of the guy or girl. I don't want people getting mad at me like the Lost Sinner. I keep calling it a dude because it looks like the bitch has a beard, but you know, it doesn't have a beard. And it's a chick. And the Chloranthi ring gives you stamina recovery speed. Like it boosts up the speed, so that's pretty nice as well. And that is pretty much it for this part. Let's just drop down here. This is where the boss door is at. And then, you know, this is not the side we want to be at to trigger the boss fight. So, we're going to go around to the other side. And um, that's how we're going to take on the boss. And I'm in hollow form right now, so we won't be able to get invaded. Um, but there is going to be an NPC that is going to invade once we cross to the other side where um, the bonfire is. Take him down. These rats are fairly easy. One shot them. Um, there is a bigger one up ahead. So be careful. It's like right there in the fog. You can't see him, but once you launch your arrow, you're going to get a hit. <laughs> and it's a big rat. This big rat's not too much of a threat, so don't get too scared. Takes three hits to down him. And he coughs up a ring. Where is it? It's right here. There we go. So, pretty cool. Um, the rat's not too tough. And here we got a fist weapon. Alright. Um, two more rats. Can't really see them, but they're there. Um, you can kind of see its ass right here. Just pop an arrow. And then, there it is. Well, at least one of them. And then let's go and just take care of the other one. Just just lock on and then you'll see him. But I don't know what's up with this mist. You can't like get rid of this. Like I don't know if you can buy a fan or something and start blowing this shit out. But <laughs> you can't get rid of it. Um, here is the legit way to get to the Maiden, right? So after you um, get the key from the Handmaiden by giving her the Umbreo Ash. Um, I, I believe the key is only like 2,000 souls or like 2,500. It's, it's one of them. And then get that and then go there and, you know, open up that and then <laughs> explore the underworld. Not really the underworld, it's just the bottom path. Well, not there, but... <laughs> From the place that I was showing you guys earlier on. You explore that and eventually you'll run into um, the ladder and you can rescue her that way. So yeah, that's how you can rescue her. Um, right here, we if we're in human form, we will be invaded. So uh, before we go into human form, I do want to uh, take care of some enemies here. Ah, man. So if you befriend our buddy up there, this should happen. Oh, <laughs> pretty freaking awesome. And then he'll take care of pretty much all the enemies in this area. And there's more on the side. Oh, they hit the tree. Can he get a multi-kill? Oh, shit. It's so freaking awesome. I don't know. It's so awesome. I love it when he gets that multi-kill. Um, I'm going to pop one ember right here. Just so we can get the invader to show up. See? Well, he, he came already. He's right there. So this guy, he is... He is kind of tough. So I'm going to... I've never tried this before because usually I just take him on. But I'm going to try and see if Goth can can help us out with this guy um because i don't want to fuck up this run here <laughs> if he doesn't help us we're gonna have to take him on like we're just gonna have to take him on well yeah because um the reason i don't want to take him on like this because um you see he he's using um a straight sword or a long sword um that thing hits pretty freaking hard when he uses it and also he can parry <laughs> oh man uh, this guy's fucking the definition of annoying right here. And he has three Estes. I don't know if Goth will shoot him, but 
Hopefully he will. I'm kind of hoping he will. Now yeah, be careful when he... Oh, it, it seems like he doesn't shoot him. So we're just going to have to... um. Take them down. Take him down the old-fashioned way. Yeah, he hits hard. Be careful not to go too crazy um, with the attacks. Um, because he, if he has to shield out, he can freaking parry you. Oh, nice! We can power within, kill this ass. <laughs> what an idiot. Alright, so now I know that Goth doesn't help you out with um, Dark Spirit. This was like a little experiment, like just in case, you know. If he does help me out, that would be awesome, but he didn't, so it <laughs> doesn't really matter. But yeah, just when you fight him, be really careful, because um, if he has to shield out, don't get. If he has to shield out, don't get in more than two attacks, because. Most of the time he'll he'll freaking backstab well not backstab he'll parry your ass on the third hit. And there are rare occasions where when you like the moment you swing, even when he has his shield out, he will freaking parry you on the spot. Like right there on the first attack, he'll parry you. It is insane. That guy is crazy. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I was like hesitating to attack when he has his shield out because I don't want to get parried because that's happened to me before and it is so freaking annoying when he starts parrying. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, um, pretty much just attack him when he has um, when he two hands his weapon, and um, if he decides to use power within, let him use it because um, it's gonna slowly zap his health and while he's casting it, go in for a backstab. And also he has one move that he didn't show off during this fight um he has this um pyromancy spell called warmth which it's like a, um it's when he casts it there's like a little like bright aura bright um orange looking aura and when you're in the aura your health will recover slowly um but there's like a that that works in both uh both players favor because if you're the enemy and you walk into the warmth you'll also get healed which is like, uh, you know, if you're about to kill your enemy and you caught, and you cast that shit and they walk into it, they're gonna start healing. So, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. Backstab. Oh, he. Oh, she didn't. Oh, <laughs> fall. Good thing they don't have grabbing attacks. Oh wait, actually she does. Right there. <laughs> The fucking cast, but it takes forever, so you know, pretty much just straight to the side, and you'll be fine. Um, yeah. Uh, for that pickup, just do a little jump here. Rustic coin. This will boost your item discovery. So if you want to farm like a certain set or something like that, um, if you want to farm her set, you know the 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 fat minister female version right here. Um, from Demon Souls, it's Demon Souls. They have like the male version. They look exactly the same. I don't know if it's just me or what, but they look like that. And um, yeah. What was I going with this? <laughs> yeah, if you want to farm any any kind of enemy set, um, use the Rust Coin to boost your luck, and then you'll have a higher chance of getting like their drops. Um, apparently luck matters in this game now. I remember it was like pretty shitty before in Dark Souls 1 and I don't even think they had it in Dark Souls 3. I think it's just item discovery and like you just use a ring for that I believe. I don't know, my memory it's it's not that great when it comes to Dark Souls 2. Oh, so there's... okay he's coming. Yeah, there's two guys here and obviously in the Souls game when, uh, when you're in in front of an enemy, you know, you're within their line of sight and they're not coming after you when they see you. You know, obviously there's some shit that's gonna go down. Like if we rushed up there, that guy was get that guy will get us from the side. Where are you? Still hiding even till now, huh? <laughs> okay. I like how you can 
when you do like a charge attack, you can hit through walls. It's so crazy. Watch out for this little ambush here. He's like hanging on the ceiling. So yeah. Um, pretty much if they see you, they don't move. <laughs> There's an ambush. You just gotta have to be aware of your surroundings. And we just gotta whip. Here we go. All right. Um, that's pretty much all. There's another room right here, and it it has nothing in here. Yeah, see. I don't know what's up with this room. I I guess if he came from the other way, and then because the um, the chick that casts, she's up there, and she'd be casting that shit that makes you bleed. She'd be spamming that thing, and that thing reaches far. So I guess you just hide inside the rooms when that thing's like kind of homing towards you. I'm guessing that's how. That's what those rooms are for. I don't really take this path, so I wouldn't really know. I usually just, you know, come in from the back. I can take that back door. And, um... Two enemies here, playing dead. Don't get too close. Uh, because if you get too close, like... See? How they start, like, flailing around. And if you get too close, they'll hit you, too. Um, another thing I want to mention, these guys are really, really weak to thrusting attacks. So if you got like a spear or whatnot, you know, something to poke their ass, that'll be pretty easy. Did I kill the... I think I did. <laughs> totally forgot. Um, but yeah, if you didn't kill those two um, thief dudes up there, once you get to this point, both of them will drop down. And it, it's pretty easy as well once they drop down in front of you. make sure Just make sure you don't like stand underneath here because they'll step on you. And you'll kind of like stagger a little bit if they do. But just like stand right here. And then they drop down in front of you. And then you can just get like a double kill right there. Pretty easy. And down he goes. And I believe that is all for this little part here. There is a door that's here that is locked. We can't access it. It's a weird looking box but it's nothing there. So I don't know what's up with that one. Um, There's a pickup on these corpses. So we can just... Whack it, and then just grab it. Whack it, and then grab it. And there's another one right there, another pickup. But make sure you don't rush towards the pickup because this guy is alive. Not anymore. Charcoal pine resin. <clears throat> so yeah, and that is pretty much all the enemies <laughs> uh, for this part, at least. And um, if you took a little damage, you know, if you took a little bit of damage. You could come here and sip some Estus soup. Yep, it's pretty much like free Estus right here. Um, and we get another, well, we get a covenant right here, Warrior of Sunlight. So if you guys want to join the covenant, uh, the Sunlight Covenant, here we go. <clears throat> um, the way to enter covenants, it's right here, okay? You go to this column right here, and then <clears throat> you guys can see on the top left corner, it says covenants. So whatever you equipped, that's gonna be in that like you're in that covenant already when you equip that item. Okay, so this is the way of blue and this is the warrior of sunlight. So and the way to tell what um, covenant you're in, you can see the top left corner. It's kind of it's kind of blurred out because I'm hollowed out, <laughs> but you can kind of see the sunlight symbol right there. And whatever covenant you're in, you know when you equip that, it'll change on the top left. So right now we're in the way of blue. You can see the little moon icon there. And instead of like all bright and yellow, it's it's blue now. Uh so yeah. I'm not gonna join any covenants right now, so you know we can forget about that. Cause there's no there's no um quest line that requires you to be in a covenant. As far as I know, I don't think there is. I went through the game a couple times and then um I, I can't find anything uh, about joining covenants to get like better stuff or something like that. Well, you can get better stuff, but you gotta do like PvP and stuff or co-op. But yeah. And this route takes you back um, to the beginning. Over here. Hang on, let me get some water. Um, Did I not get that? Is that a pickup? Oh, did I already grab it? I think I, oh yeah, it's right there. <laughs> all right, all right. So I got the pickup, and um, yeah. So if you decide to go this path, I feel like this path is a little bit easier 
Uh, it's just that you're gonna have to watch the arrows when it comes down. Uh, once you reach that part with the trees. That's pretty much all you're gonna have to worry about if you take this path here. Uh, but, you know, the other path is pretty awesome too. Uh, but you could explore this path first and then go to the other side. So, I don't know, whatever you guys want. I just find this one a little bit more easier. Well, the one on the other side a little bit more easier. So you take this path, and this was where the Phantom invaded, um, and the way to go, it's in the front. There are some more pickups, and we still have to get that Umbral Ash. And the Ash is going to be on the left somewhere. <laughs> and I want to trigger these guys to come out, so Goth can like snipe the shit out of them. Here we got a Reinforced Club, Worker Hat. Love you, man. I love you, goth. So here is the reinforced club. And then we also got the worker hat. This is a drop from the enemy. I guess I got lucky there from this guy. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff you can pick up here. Um, There's these white branches. Alright. And these are what I'm talking about. If you just take these ordinary ones, um, uh, he's not going to uh, protect you. So you see, they're they're in a sep um separate 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 um section, and this one has um the description for goth, and this one has the original description, which pretty much it's like chameleon. When you use it, you'll blend into the environment. So yeah. Um, there is a little jump we have to do here. I'm so fucking scared of this jump. I will do that jump after we open up the shortcut because I don't want to fuck up the jump and I die. <sighs> I hate platforming overall. It doesn't matter what game it is. I just hate it. Um, there's a pickup here, but there is also an ambush right there. So make sure you just run over here and then back up. Because this guy has like, what, a great sword? Looks like the Swag Hander. The Swag Hander. And that shit will hurt if you try to pick this up and he does a jump, uh, dropping attack behind you. Uh, but yeah, this this um, corpse contains the cleric set. And this is pretty much the set you start off with as well when you um, first load up the game. If you decide to become a cleric, that is. Alright. Whoop, that's not the right... <laughs> that one, that's the one. But yeah, oh, and forgot to show you guys the... Except for um, those chicks. But yeah. And uh, the ash is right here. So this is very important if you want to um, unlock more stuff for the handmaiden. Where the heck is she? I mean, where the heck is she? Where's the freaking thing? There we go. It's in one of the key items. And also, I forgot to show you guys um, these... Okay, and then here's the sharp version. <clears throat> uh, is there anything else I missed? I feel like I didn't show off something. Is it a weapon? I don't know. I don't think I'm... Uh, did I show off this? This little drink. Let's make a toast. Restores HP and temporarily boosts frost resistance. That's cool. But yeah. Um, that's pretty much it. Let's go and open up that shortcut before we make the jump. Because I don't want to die. <laughs> and then we're going to have to go through this whole thing again. Um, there is this guy right here. Uh, if you want to take him on, be careful because, um... Yeah, see how we just blocked his attack but we still took damage? Because he's got them sickles. And the freaking sickles will cut right through your shield. And if you guys played, um, <laughs> thanks, friend. Oh, scary. But yeah, if you guys played Dark Souls 1, uh, if you fought, uh, Lothric, um, you guys will know what I'm talking about. That guy's got them, the sickles, the hook swords, where when you attack and you, when you attack somebody and if, even though they're blocking, they'll still take like a little chip damage. So yeah, it's pretty crazy. And we just got the Great Scythe right here. 
surprised this is not a full on um it's not a full on dex weapon. Seems like a hybrid weapon too. I don't know. But yeah. One I'm wondering if um uh, if a lot of people are gonna be using scythes in this game. Because I know in Dark uh, not Dark Souls and Bloodborne a lot of people are using that great scythe. Um, that can transform into the curved sword, which does look so it looks so freaking badass. Oh my god, it's so good. And here is the gate to the boss. Um, once you go in there, that's where the boss fight is gonna happen. The frame rate is like chugging a little bit here, it's like lagging. But yeah, once you step in there, boss fight. All right. Um, if you want to join the the Mount Maker's Covenant, which it's um the purple phantom covenant thing. I suggest you don't trigger a boss fight just yet, all right? Because I'm gonna show you guys how to um how to join that covenant in the bits after I make this jump. Uh, where is it again? Here we go. I'm so scared when it comes to jumping. Whew. Holy shit! <laughs> I got my heart pounding. And once we make the jump, we're gonna get this undead bone ash. No, undead bone shard, right? And um, this is pretty important, right? Because um, with that, we're gonna be able to um, upgrade uh, the amount of health we get back from drinking Estus. So um, you can you can get total of ten of those bone shards in one playthrough, and fifteen, well, four, no, twelve Estus shards. Uh, wait, actually not 12. 11 more like. Yeah, 11. Because you start off with 4 Estus already, so... Yeah, it's 4. So yeah. You start off with 4 and then you can get... The maximum amount of Estus you can carry, it's 15. So you get... um You can find 11 shards and... For the, um, the bone... The bone shards, you can find total of 10. Because you can get up to plus 10 and that's the highest it can go. Even if you get like another one... Uh, you get the 11th one for the bone shard and you get like the 12th one for the Estus shard from like NG plus or something like that. You know, it's not going to let you upgrade to like plus 11 for bone uh, for healing and stuff like that. So yeah, highest it's going to be plus 10 for uh, the amount you can heal and then for the amount you can carry it's plus uh, it's 15. You can carry up to 15. So yeah, uh, next up we came from there. Alright, and we went through this area right here. So instead of going there, and if we hang a right over here, here is the Mount Maker Covenant. It's a pretty cool covenant. Ouch. It's like kind of getting to it, it's kind of a bitch, you know, because these guys be shooting and fucking blow darts at you like there's no tomorrow. And there's one, a there's like a little ambush right here. Fucking, come on! Get triggered! Thank you. Ow! <laughs> Okay, gonna, I'm gonna heal up a little bit because I don't want to die here. Be pretty pathetic to die to these things. Oh, I, I was like, this guy just offed himself. Man, I hate it when we trade blows. Surprise, that guy is just totally ignoring me. Okay, you can just you can just die then. <laughs> If you're gonna ignore me, just die. And then that guy right there. Um, grab the plank shield. Let's see where it's at. Right here. The the freaking bloodborne shield that they give you. And then there's this guy. I don't know what this guy's about. Yeah, I don't know what this is. I guess it's kind of like a... Actually, I don't even know what, what he is talking about. Who the heck is Nana? More like Nani? Where is this guy? Did he fall off somewhere? Oh no, he's right here. Okay. 
Hello. And that is pretty much it for this little part here. And now we can go and join the Covenant. And um, yeah, pretty much if you want to try to join the Covenant, there, there's no way to like, you know, not go to a bonfire and reset the area because pretty much you can't return unless you use a Homer Bone or if you somehow die in the Covenant area. And the way to get there is you just simply drop down here. Um, there is an enemy here, but he won't be aggroed. Um, if you haven't killed the boss, he won't do anything to you. But if you killed the, the boss of this area, he will turn hostile. So, yeah, if you want to join the Covenant, this is the guaranteed way for you to join the Covenant. There is no other way. Um, some people... I was reading up the forms and they say that um, once you've beaten a certain amount of main bosses you can come back here to where the boss door is at and there's going to be a summoning sign there and you can summon that well you can get summoned by that NPC that left their sign there to fight uh, an enemy and then you can join if you successfully defeated the enemy which I don't know if it is true. Um, I've seen videos of people doing it but when I got there and I reached the end game it's probably because I, I I don't know if I did something wrong I, or, or I didn't do anything in the middle of the game but you know that never worked for me so the only certain way that I know that you can get to this covenant it's you come here to this guy before killing the boss of this area okay I don't know if you trigger the boss I don't know if it will still work even if you trigger a boss fight but I know if you want to get into this for sure don't Freaking, uh, well, freaking, um, freaking take down the boss of this area. Don't even, like, go into his room, alright? And just come here right away and just come to the back of the cage and you can examine it. Come on. I like how he just. He just chills, you know, he just gets on his knees and he's like, you know what? You can enter this cage. <laughs> this is so weird. I mean, if this is, if you're there, if you're actually there in person, would you want to get into a cage of some enemy? <laughs> I don't even know. But I guess they're that's why they're called the mad dark phantoms or dark spirits you know when you invade because these people are kind of crazy all right and you see there's no bonfire or anything so the only way to return it's you have to use a homer bone or you somehow die i don't even know how you can die Without attacking this guy, maybe turn him hostile against you and then, you know, have him kill you. But yeah, don't worry though, because um, he will give you um, a homer bone. But first, let's check out this great shield that we picked up. It's an offensive shield. Okay, and uh, let's talk to this. Hey, aren't you the one who invaded me? <laughs> yeah, I think you're the one who invaded me, bitch. You want to die? Well, what's up? This pit is for hollows, not for the likes of you, same folk. Or perhaps you are a hollow, posing as other ones? Just... just agree. Just agree again, uh, with whatever the hell he says. <laughs> yes, yes. Then we are just fine. It's important to know who you are. But we'll all be mad soon enough. And should you be undead, well, all the more so. Beware, the shackles of the gods are fragile. You might need this. Etch it on your heart if you feel your sanity slipping. The Mount Makers. Come here to pile up your victims, for that will form your anchor. You'll see when you go mad. They'll be your family. <laughs> uh okay 
you'll go mad one day, but not today. Take my advice. Use this bone and leave this place. This pit is for hollows and for the occasional madman fond of piling up victims. You've better things to do, I'd hope. <laughs> this pit is for hollows and for the So yeah, um I don't know if if you have to spare the the boss's life in order to keep this guy alive. Uh if you want to upgrade the covenant. I know you um you all you do the offering over here. You know, you offer the shackles. Um which I'm just gonna offer one because I only have one. So I don't know if we do the offering like after we do the offering, do we get our items from here or do, does this guy give it to us? Because I don't know. Because um I know once you trigger the boss fight, this guy this guy's gonna die. So Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I don't know. And I heard that um once you upgrade the covenant to rank two or one, it's it's one of them. And you get a katana called the bloodless katana. And people say it's pretty good. I don't know. I I haven't done much with the Mount Maker Covenants. Actually, pretty much I've just when I invade it's just the um, the Red Phantom Covenant one. Which is called something I can't remember, but I, I mostly invade as the Red Phantom. I don't use this purple phantom thing. So I never really ranked it up. But you know, for those of you guys who um who have you know used invading and stuff uh bonfire last rest of that why not but yeah for those of you guys who have done invading for a while for for mount makers and have gotten the bloodlust katana let me know how it is you know let me know if it's worth getting because like my current main main weapon it's um the dual katanas that you get later on in the game what the heck okay this is not where i want to be <laughs> I am gonna go. Did I miss the bonfire? It should be a fourth. <gasps> oh shit! I didn't. <laughs> I didn't light the bonfire that was near the in. Oh, where the NPC invaded us at. Yeah, there was a bonfire there. I just totally ignored it. I can't believe it. Yeah, it's not here. So that's the one I'm missing because there's there should be four bonfire in this area, but I was like, there's only three. What the heck? But yeah, let me know if the bloodlust katana it's worth getting, right? Because like like I said, um, my current main weapon it's um the dual katanas, which works pretty well for me. But yeah, let me know if it's worth getting and like what else you can get and you know how the covenant is, how's the how's the mad phantom family coming along. <laughs> Yeah, leave in the comments and um, make sure to uh, give you a shout out in the next episode. But yeah, uh, if you guys know, let me know because um, I don't know. And that is pretty much it for this episode. Yeah. Um, yeah. And next episode, we're going to go fuck up the boss in this area and not give a shit about the the Mount Maker Covenant because we pretty much have the Covenant it's just that I don't know if the offering and stuff will still work uh, if the guy dies so yeah anyways yeah uh, it's whoa holy crap it's been like an hour and 20 minutes now and this has gone on for pretty long might have to split the clip um don't know yet uh, if I do I'll upload both parts I just don't want the video to be too long, you know, because um, not probably not everyone's gonna have the time to watch the entire thing, so I might split it halfway. So, well, so yeah, I don't know. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> Let's see how the rendering is. This is probably gonna take forever. So, anyways, I'm gonna stop talking now. Um, thank you all for watching, and if you made it this long, assuming I'm keeping this clip at one hour, but you know. Uh, but anyways, well, anyways, <laughs> thank you all for watching, and I hope this video has been entertaining, and helpful, and enjoyable. And uh, if you found if y'all found all three of those qualities to be in this video, then a hey, stay tuned for the next one. But until next time, 
I will see you all later. Yeah, we're gonna take down that motherfucker right there in the next episode. So yeah. Until then, Holmes. Out. It's not the one I want to do. Come on. <laughs>